Hey there, thanks so much for tuning in for a Valentine's themed workshop. I'm Rachel, I'm the owner of Helen Olivia, and I'll be teaching you how to assemble a beautiful red and pink Valentine's arrangement. Um, so before we get started, a couple of quick housekeeping notes. Um, if at any point you feel like I'm going too fast, feel free to pause me or rewind. Um, we are going to need a couple of things to make our arrangement today. So I'll talk you through what those things are. Um, you'll need some type of cutting tool. So I'm using a floral clipper um, and I'm also using a floral knife. But if you don't have these, a pair of scissors is just fine. Um, and then we'll also need to fill your vase, which is a beautiful pink ceramic, um, with room temperature water. So really important that you never handle flowers with freezing cold water because it will shock them. Um, or very warm water because it'll cause them to blow open prematurely. So just a good room temperature water is ideal. Um, and in your kit, you should also have a sheet of chicken wire, which we're going to use as the structure or armature inside of our design. Um, so if you've ever tried to arrange flowers at home before and felt like the shape was a little bit wonky or things were shifting too much, um, this is the secret sauce. So it's going to allow us to um, position our flowers and have them stay perfectly in place. So structure is really key. Um, so with our chicken wire, we're just going to mold it into a ball shape. Um, and it should not be so tight um, that you can't still fit stems through the ball. So you can see mine is um, probably, I don't know, five inches across. It's still really nice and loose. Um, and I'm just gonna pop that into the base. And it's okay if a tiny bit of it sticks out on um, the top, but most of it should sit down in the water. And we are going to, of course, now want to work to cover up our chicken wire. We don't want anyone to see that it's in there. It's kind of like our little secret magic trick. So um, we're just going to lay our flowers on top so it becomes invisible. Um, and the first flower we always reach for is going to be our largest flower. So we go largest to smallest. Um, and in this case, our largest flower is our baby green hydrangea. Um, these are coming in from South America and they still have a plastic sleeve on them. So go ahead and just remove the plastic off of your hydrangea. Um, and all of the hydrangea will have a number of leaves still on the stem. And we're just gonna pluck away the lowest lying leaves and just keep intact the few that sit right up close to the bloom. So I'm gonna do that for all of my stems. So again, just peeling away any of the low-lying leaves and just keeping the topmost ones attached. This is a really good rule of thumb. Anytime you handle flowers, you always want to peel away um, 95 to 99% of the leaves because it's one less thing that the stem needs to keep alive and deliver nutrients to. Um, so generally your flowers will last a lot longer if you take the leaves off. Um, and then the other really key piece is you don't ever want to get leaves that sit below the baseline. So once leaves get into your water, you're really creating your own ecosystem in your vase. So your water will turn a little sludgy, it'll look like swamp water, um, and that'll kill your flowers faster. Okay, so I've prepped all of my hydrangea and I'm gonna now pay attention to the height of my vase to determine how uh, long I wanna keep my hydrangea stem. So I've got about a five inch high vase, so I'm gonna keep my hydrangea stem length to about five inches as well. Um, and when you cut your hydrangea, you wanna make sure that you're cutting it on an angle. So the bottom of the stem gets a nice angled cut. I'm gonna come around and show you up close what I mean by that. So I've spliced the stem and this area right here is called the pith and that's what is inside your stem. It's a fibrous material and it's what does the drinking for your stem. Um, so the more surface area you expose with an angled cut, the more your flower can drink. So very important to get a nice deep angled cut. And once you've cut your stem, you wanna get it in water pretty quickly before it starts to seal over. So you'll notice when I place my stems, my flower is just kind of resting on the rim of the base. So that's very intentional. I'm cutting to a five inch length and I'm just allowing my hydrangea to sit right on the rim of the base and I'm kind of angling my stem um, down into the other side of the base. 
And you can see how those beautiful hydrangea leaves that we left on are really giving us some pretty coverage over the base. So just like that, I'll give a little spin so you can see. So the hydrangea is going to be the element that we keep tightest and most compact in our design. Everything else we're going to allow to sit out a little bit farther. So we're going to layer our flowers on top of and around the hydrangea. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to play with a little bit of greenery. So first, the order that we do things, always first hydrangea, um, and then we play around with a little bit of greenery. And after that, all the flowers. So I'm just working to get the greenery out of my bucket because it's kind of a tangled mess in my bucket. Um, I've got three types of greenery that I'm going to be using. Um, I've got gorgeous seeded eucalyptus. I have a little bit of umbrella fern, which is named, of course, because it looks like an umbrella. And then I've got the most beautiful viburnum berry. So why don't we go ahead and start with our viburnum berry. Um, we're just going to cut this into smaller pieces. So you can see that I've got a stem that has a fork in it, right? So I can separate it into two pieces. So if you have a stem that you can separate into two pieces, definitely don't be afraid to do that. And we're just going to work our greenery in, in between the hydrangea to break it up a little bit. And we're going to allow it to hang a tiny bit farther out than the hydrangea. So everything again is sitting on top of or in front of your hydrangea. Uh, we also have this gorgeous seeded eucalyptus. It's a buried eucalyptus. Um, so we're going to cut this again into smaller pieces and we're going to work that right in between the hydrangea as well. So think of it like we're creating a beautiful backdrop for our flowers to kind of sit in. So this is the uh, hard work before the fun of adding the flowers. So I was able to split my seeded eucalyptus into I think two or three pieces so I could kind of spread it all over the design. And my chicken wire is almost completely hidden at this point, so that's great. Uh, and my last ingredient is this beautiful umbrella fern. It's very soft and feathery, um, and I think really appropriate for Valentine's Day. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my umbrella fern, and I'm actually going to cut the stem a little bit shorter than 5 inches. So you can see it's got a tiny little nub of the stem, because when I bury it in the vase, I'm going to allow the, the fern to kind of bunch together um, a little bit more. So I'm going to put my umbrella fern almost straight into the middle of the container and then I'm going to have to go in and kind of manipulate where the fronds land. All right, beautiful. So that's what my umbrella fern looks like. All right, so now I am ready to add my flowers and I'm going to start again with my biggest flower first and work my way down to the smallest. So my biggest flowers are definitely my roses. Um, and I've got a few different varieties of rose that I'm working with. Um, we have gorgeous ascot roses. They're more of a sweetheart size, but the color is incredible. It's like a real um, plummy purple color. Um, and then we've got really beautiful pink Floyds, which are hot pink roses. And then we've got uh, some freedom roses, which are just a classic Valentine's red. So we're going to take our roses and we're going to evenly spread them all over our design. And of course, we're going to strip those leaves away before we do anything. And just be careful of thorns. There are some thorns. Um, so the leaves come off and then we also need to yank off any exterior petals called the guard petals that don't look great. So if you see a petal that's curled or blemished or bruised, you want to remove it. But you only want to remove the petal from the outside of the rose. So when we talk about roses, this is the face of the flower, the pretty part of the flower. And roses are bruise prone, so if you really kind of overhandle the face of the rose, you'll notice crease marks and browning. Um, so we're going to handle our roses only from the side. And these are the guard petals. So you can remove guard petals just by gently plucking them away. Does not hurt the rose at all, but does give a perfectly clean to beautiful rose appearance. Um, so anytime you see roses at the grocery store or farmer's market, generally they have not been conditioned or handled by anyone before. So never judge a rose if it has bad guard petals. Um, 
don't worry about it. You can just pluck them away and underneath you'll have a perfectly pretty rose. So we're gonna do that with all of the roses for our design. So go ahead and clean the roses. And then once they're cleaned, we're going to position them all over the base. So since it's Valentine's Day, we'll talk about, everyone's always curious, what happens in the flower world for Valentine's Day? So obviously the demand increases tenfold for roses this week over any other week. Um, and red roses in particular are just such a hot commodity that the pricing balloons. Um, so red roses cost about 100% more this week than they did last week. Um, and the quality tends to not be so great. So you'll notice, for example, that our hot pink roses look a lot nicer than our red roses. And that's just a supply and demand thing. Um, so if you have the opportunity to explain this to someone who does your Valentine's flower ordering, um, it's always better to skip the red roses this holiday. Um, if you're set on red, tulips are a great option or alternative, um, or even switching to a peony might be better. Um, anything other than red rose is usually safe for the holiday. So we're going to go ahead and finish conditioning all of these roses. Just spread them in. And you can see that I'm allowing them to sit maybe an inch to a half inch farther out than my hydrangea. Um, and again, I'm keeping that stem length right at five or six inches. Um, so the stems are sitting really fully down towards the bottom of the vase, which is also important because you want your flowers to be sitting where the water reserve is. So they're really well anchored and hydrated down into the water. With our ascot roses, there's definitely gonna be garden petals that need to come off of these. And ascot roses are the type of rose that look like really nothing when you first receive them, but they are slow openers um, and will be gorgeous in a day or two. So just have patience with your ascot roses. And they are a thorny rose variety, so uh, use caution when handling. All right, so we're just gonna pop these guys in and around the arrangement as well. And this is really starting to look like Valentine's Day. Lots of reds and pinks and purples leaving the shop this whole week. Okay, so I've got those positioned in. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna reach for are my spray roses. Um, we're using a variety called Gem Star, which are really beautiful, it's a healthy variety. Um, some spray roses do not open to be a pretty shape or they're really prone to rot, but this variety is tried and true. We love it. Um, and a spray rose is just a rose that has lots of miniature blooms on one stem. So we're going to take these leaves off and then we're also going to go through and if there are any guard petals that look like they need to come off, just carefully peel those away. And I tend to be a little bit less meticulous with conditioning spray roses. Um, so don't feel like you have to get every single little guard petal. Um, so we're going to, again, cut our stem. And we're just going to tuck these guys in around our face for a pretty pop of pink. Okay. that we're going to add are our gorgeous plummy hellebore. So these are coming from Holland. You may recognize them from your front yard or backyard because hellebore thrive in this climate. Um, and they're one of the only flowers that blooms in the dead of winter in Washington, D.C. So um, they come in a variety of colors. Some of my favorite flowers are hellebores. Uh, I think they're just really elegant. So we're going to pop these in. We're going to cut again a nice angled cut and we're just gonna work these into our design. Okay. And at this point in time, hopefully you're really seeing the value of the chicken wire. Um, it's a game changer. If you have not designed with chicken wire before, it is so helpful and the flowers stay perfectly in place, which is really nice. Um, all right, so our next, flower that we're going to play with are these incredible plum ranunculus. 
Um, these are coming in from Italy. Um, and this is an extra grade variety, so it's a little bit bigger than your normal ranunculus. Um, and they are just super gorgeous. Um, the stems are a little bit delicate, so just be careful as you add them. If it feels like the stem is not slipping in where you try it first, just move it to a new spot. Um, you don't want to force these. Okay. So mine are positioned. And then one of our last flowers is a special, special flower. I'm going to come up close so you can see it. This is coming all the way from Japan, and this is like the Ferrari of ranunculus. Um, so this is a butterfly variety. Her name is Charlotte. She's a Charlotte butterfly Japanese ranunculus, and they're just beautiful. And even though they look super delicate, they're actually a very lasting flower, so this will hold up beautifully in your design. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and place her. trouble slipping mine in so I'm not forcing it I'm just moving it to a new spot okay so I've got my pretty Charlotte ranunculus and then I'm gonna pop in my little lavender clematis which is so beautiful clematis is a vining plant and this is a plant that thrives in DC in the summertime um, a lot of people have clematis on big trellises or even growing up in their mailbox um, so you may recognize this flower and again a really delicate little stem so just be careful but such a sweet little pop of lavender. And then our last two flowers are beautiful cymbidium orchids, and they're in little water tubes. So they've got their own water source. They don't need to get into the vase. Um, and we can just pocket these wherever we like in our design. Um, water tubes are great little design tools because they allow you um, to kind of position flowers wherever you like. All right. So that's my complete Valentine's Day arrangement. It's classic reds, pinks, purples for the holiday and lots of gorgeous flowers from all over the world. Um, so I hope everyone had a great time designing. Uh, to keep this happy and fresh for days, I would recommend doing a couple of things. Uh, the first is if your flowers do not like bright direct sunlight, so keep them away from sunny windows and keep them away from heat vents or drafts. So a pretty consistent, like regular house temperature is good. Um, you wanna add fresh water to this once a day if you can or every other day. So just put it under a kitchen faucet on a slow drip so it flushes out the old water and you get new water. Um, the flowers are perfectly happy if they get wet, so do not worry about that. Or if you're looking to do it more quickly, because we're in a chicken wire armature, you can pick up your entire design out of the vase. You can throw it up and down, you can spin it around, and your flowers stay perfectly still. It looks like a magic trick that I'm doing. Um, and then you can refresh your vase water and just drop this right back in. Um, so if you weren't sold on chicken wire before, it's a pretty cool trick that you can do with it. Um, if any of you have any questions, feel free to just message us on Instagram or give us a call. We're happy to answer any questions. Um, and we do teach uh, public workshops once a week or every other week. So if you loved this, please join us again. Thanks so much for tuning in. Happy Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day to you all. Bye-bye.